So why are toxic people toxic? I'm Dr. Greg Jantz talking about these toxic people and what's at the real root of that toxicity. Dr. Gregory Jans is a best-selling author of over 45 books and the founder of the Center A Place of Hope, voted a top 10 center for depression treatment in the U.S. As the pioneer of whole person care, Dr. Jans is known as the messenger of hope. Now the nation's expert on anxiety, depression, substance abuse, relationships, trauma, and PTSD, here is Dr. Gregory Jantz. In my little book, How to Deal with Toxic People, hi, I'm Dr. Greg Jantz as a counselor and educator. I can tell you that right now, the word toxic is a pretty popular word. Toxic, toxic environment, toxic culture, but toxic people, who are they? Well, it doesn't matter. You got one in every family. You have one in every workplace. You have one in every church. And when I say one, there's probably more than one. But I want to focus on, though I've talked about toxic people, I want to spend a few minutes just sharing about, okay, toxic people. Where does this come from? And this is a question that's come up many times. So I have a toxic uncle and, and I don't get it. Why is he that way? Why is he doing these things? It makes no sense. Here's some underlying currents to toxic people. And I've got a few of these to go over with us today. I'm going to move through quickly. I greatly honor your time and I want to get as much information to you as quickly as we can. Now, there are people, number one, that enjoy being toxic. They literally enjoy being mean. They're, I mean, it sounds wrong, but there are people that um, they're mean spirited. In my notes here, I added uh, they take pleasure. They hard to believe they take pleasure in challenging other people. They know how to push buttons of other people and they are there to make their life a challenge. And as we look at this and go, OK, what in the world? What's happened? Why would a person become mean? So there is such thing as a person that get get very vengeful. They've been injured in some way. And they're just going to continue uh, on a terrible pleasure path of creating more injury to as many people that they can. And there's a, if you will, sadistic enjoyment of hurting others. And as we look at this, we go, okay, yes, they probably did have significant trauma in their life, the lack of forgiveness, lack of resolution. And so they're going to just keep repeating this and taking pleasure in hurting others. Sometimes this is the more difficult person to, to treat and to care for because um, there is a payoff for them. There's a payoff in hurting others. There's a payoff in re-injuring and they have to be right. Uh, it's very powerful, which brings us to number two. Uh, toxic uh, behavior can run in a family. Um, maybe you grew up where there was a lot of emotional abuse, name calling, threats, a um, lot of intense anger, and this uh, was learned. You learned, you simply learned how to have these behaviors. It is what was modeled for you. And it's the from our family, from whoever raised us, this is what we learned, and we learned it well. And it's just a pattern that we've continued. We think in order to get our way, we we're just mean or we're manipulative or we call another person names because we learned to do it to get what we want so are there toxic families oh, man yeah there's toxic families and does it perpetuate toxic behavior ongoingly absolutely all right number uh, three I've, I've got a, sh a short list, but an important list of why toxic people are the way they are. Um, they love control. Um, but underneath all that is a deep sense of insecurity. They are so insecure that they are at a place of, I have to have control. I have to have power just to feel like I have any sense of value. And, you know, for them, the fear of 
losing, the fear of being behind, the fear. Well, let's just say it. Fear is their constant companion. And so if I can maintain control, I'm addressing fear. If I have anxiety, I feel like I can gain control of another person or people. Uh, it's a temporary fix to that anxiety. I have to have control. A toxic person with a great need for control has a huge amount of anxiety and fear in their life. Um, the verse that I've uh, spoken about from time to time, 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Just the first part of that. And the uh, first part of that there is just a spirit of fear. So fear comes on many levels. Now, I can have a thyroid issue, a low thyroid, and my body is going to put off anxiety. I can have nutrient deficiencies and have anxiety and depression. I can learn how to be anxious because I lived in a home where there was lots of emotional abuse. I had trauma in my life, so maybe I have developed post-traumatic stress disorder. But if we look at this and go, okay, um, maybe I grew up in a home where there was constant comparisons. I was never, ever good enough. And so I am going to have control and I am going to maintain that in order to feel better, to get some relief. All right. Um, the toxic person is using usually threats to control. If you don't do this, or if you do this, I'm going to. So there's a constant uh, veil of threats. Um, we agreed to this, and if you don't do this, I'm out of here. That kind of behavior, um, where it's all about controlling the outcome that you don't feel like you can control. So, all right. Um, next one, attention. A toxic person, yes, I know, attention and the need for attention. A toxic person, in my notes, uh, is deeply wounded. They don't have or know how to express their pain, and so they're expressing it the pain in, in a lot of different ways, that deep wound, um, they can develop an attitude of victimhood. So I'm a victim, and the more I'm a victim, the more I get attention. So this is not the person with aggression and with um, a lot of outward emotional abusive behaviors. This is a person, okay, to get that attention, they become a victim. And there's always a reason for how they feel. There's always a, a need that they have that can never, ever be fulfilled. They are an acting victim. And the victimhood um, achieves the same sense of control. If I'm a victim, other people are serving me. I'm, st I'm, I'm in control as a victim. Um, they may manipulate others goodwill others empathy towards them they're going to manipulate it and they're going to use people and people are going to feel used Whew, i know so we've got here's here's where we are so far number one they enjoy it number two toxic behavior was learned in family number three it's all about control number four i'm a victim and it's about attention and then for a toxic person think of this word winning uh winning is everything Toxic person, power and control. Winning is everything. Um, lots of payoffs to this. Um, if I'm going to win at any cost and be abusive and gaslight other people and be in control, then there's going to be a reward. Maybe it's a career advancement. Um, but as long as they gain from this behavior a sense of winning, I won. See, I was right. I won. Or I won in the workplace. See, I, I get the I got the raise, I got the new position. That's what it's about. Um and then the next one I want us to just take a quick look at is they never ever emerge and grow through what I'll call emotional adolescence. Now, adolescence emotions are oftentimes up and down. Um adolescents have a different sleep schedule. <laughs> Um, moody at times. And so there is a 
adolescent at times, not everyone does this, but emotional um, roller coaster. And toxic adults have never moved beyond that emotional roller coaster. They have never um, um, changed that behavior from adolescence. And so some toxic people seem like you're dealing with a adolescent, a emerging teenager that has not grown through that and balanced out. Um, so it's just toxic behavior that they've never emerged from. Maybe they got enough rewards in their family and ma manipulated people uh, and their personality was such so that they just continued from adolescence right on into adulthood and doing these behaviors. All right. Now, here's an important one. Final one I want to talk about today. A toxic person is compensating for underlying mental or emotional pain. Now, here's what I'm saying. Um, there is deep, deep pain. Could have been early childhood grief, a significant or significant loss, trauma early on. Could have been the form of abuse, uh, sexual abuse, uh, emotional abuse. But there is deep, deep, I'm going to use the word trauma in their life. And that trauma probably has been repeated multiple times and has really created... Um, such pain that instead of dealing with the source of that pain, they are now um, acting out that pain. And there's not been a forgiveness. There's not been issues really dealt with. And they may have also suffered from, I made a list here, chronic depression and anxiety. Um, you may see some personality disorders, kind of maybe narcissistic, the world's all about me, we manipulate other people. Um, you may see some addiction, a lot of addiction in a, a person with unresolved um, emotional abuse or uh, underlying mental issues that were never resolved. Um, think of these three. Anger, so with anger could be resentments, bitterness, deep hurt. Think of shame. Shame is, I feel defective, I'm so shameful, and uh, there could be uh, things I feel so guilty for, but I feel that I'm kind of ruined with because I have that shame. I, I feel defective. So then I'm going to begin to act out uh, that in various different ways. So the important that a toxic person deal with the, these deep underlying issues in order to move through that toxic behavior that they've learned to do and and develop new relational skills new ways of coping with emotions they always have to come back and learn how do i deal with anger or hurt in my life how do i deal with fear anxieties in healthy ways uh, how do i deal with guilt or shame that's in my life so managing those three toxic emotions anger fear and guilt uh, is core uh, to overcoming uh, toxic behavior in one's life so just a few thoughts those are and thank you this all came through some questions that were asked about um what's underneath this toxic behavior because you can really feel injured by a toxic person you can feel taken advantage of you can feel shamed you can feel disrespected disregarded that's what toxic people do and they could even say i love you but then their behavior shows just the opposite uh, and so it can be conflicting they can um, gaslight you and and use all these different uh, mechanisms to make you feel horrible about yourself because remember they some some really are mean they enjoy it other they learn to do all this others they're so fragile it's all about control others they become a victim and so getting all this attention uh, also keeps them in the victim role Others, it's all about winning. I am going to win at any cost, and I will be as injurious as needed to do that. Um, others, things they were doing in adolescence and never grew out of, and uh, others, it's been deep, 
deep wounds and trauma in their life that have really never been dealt with effectively. And so I become a very toxic person. So that's why, now this is what's underneath, but that's why we've got to have strategies to deal with toxic people in our life, which is uh, not what this was all about. This was just sharing some of the underlying issues that could be there when people are toxic. Plenty of that. And we want to reflect and be a healthy person, a healthy problem solver. We want to speak words that are uh, a blessing and healing in people's lives and be careful. Sometimes we need to remember we can be a target, a target of, of the people's unhappiness of their own issues. They're going to target us. But if we're the target, it doesn't mean we're the source. So we got to separate that out and know, hey, that's about them. And I have to tell you, unless it's a very challenging personality disorder, uh, like narcissistic behavior or narcissistic personality disorder, toxic people, when they get to the root cause, uh, can and do, they are able to change. I think too, there is, um, this is why we like the whole person. There's even spiritual insights spiritual healing emotional healing i think there's physical healing as well and forgiveness and forgiving ourselves and forgiving others who have deeply wounded us has to be a part of that picture forgiveness there is hope and uh, again if you're with a toxic person or around one a lot uh, remember you may be the target but you're not the source of their unhappiness